Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and this is going to be a how to have a best start in No Man's Sky. So you just got the game or you just got back into the game and you want some tips on, hey, I want to start a fresh save. The Frontiers update just came out. I'm excited about the settlements. I'm excited about all this stuff, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get done or, you know, how to get everything rocking and rolling. Well, this is the guide for you. So when you first start out, you're going to be on a uh, hazardous planet. So the planet is going to try to kill you. The biggest thing you want to do is either look for sodium, which is a yellow plant or a cave that you <clears throat> that you can hide in. A cave is going to be your best bet because that is where you can get a biggest advantage of it. So let's go forward here. And remember, keep in mind, whichever way you're facing forward, that is the direction of your ship. So my ship is in this direction, even though you don't know about it yet. So let's get some uh, ferrite dust while we're doing all this. So get some ferrite dust because we're going to need it in order to fix our suit. So while we're looking for our cave or some sodium, we could do that as well. Let's look around here. There should be a cave, but maybe not. It depends on your, your, uh, your planet. Every planet is going to be different. So that plant right there is not what we're looking for. We're looking for a yellow one, not a blue one. Oh, there's a little symbol right there. That is buried technology. It's under the ground. We can't get that yet. That's okay. Let's get this one right here, though. This broken machinery. If you go into here, you, you don't want to keep this residual goop. It's just going to clog up your inventory. So I would get rid of it. Delete that and open it up. Sometimes you'll get an upgrade out of here. But most of the time, you'll get nanites just like I did right there. So let's continue on. And here's our first yellow plant right here. Let's pick this baby up. Boom. And now if you want to you know, refill your hazard protection, hit down on your D-pad. And it'll bring up your quick menu just like that. And you go up on your recharge, the little battery icon. And you can recharge all your equipment. But we're just doing our hazard protection. That'll protect us from the environment. So let's do that. And sodium. Done. All right, so now we're good for a little while longer, but it's still going to keep running down. So we need to find some good stuff. Let's go pick up some of this stuff. Nope, we can't get that yet because our multi-tool is not upgraded yet. Let's get some ferrite dust. And we're also going to be looking for some plants because we need some carbon. You see how it says un unidentified plant carbon? You need to pick those up. Now, your plants might look a little different depending on which planet type you started out with. It could be trees. It could be little bushes like this. Whatever your plant is, you're going to want to get a whole bunch of those as well, as well as the rocks, so you can get some ferrite dust. Now, we should be okay. Let me check and see in our inventory. So if we go over to our exosuit, we have 40 carbon and 121 ferrite dust. We are doing really good. So let's go to our multi-tool. We can fix our scanner because we need 75 ferrite dust. Let's do that. Fixed. Now we can scan for items. So if you click in your uh, left thumbstick, it will scan the area around you and say, oh, there's some sodium over there. And it'll color everything. It'll color code everything. So NA is your sodium rich plant. And you can look around for all that kind of stuff. We're going to need to get some sodium. That way we could do our tutorial. You can't skip it or you can try, but it won't really let you do that. So let's get some sodium real fast. Recharge our uh, hazard protection and we should be okay to move on to the next step in the system the process all right so now we have it press down on your d-pad recharge boom there you go so now we are good so now it's going to tell us hey look you need to go to your ship your ship is crashed kind of broken oh there it is right there and look at that boom we were heading in almost the same direction we should have been doing all right let's get these blue crystals on our way because these blue crystals are dihydrogen. We're going to need this later on. And so you want to plan ahead. Get dihydrogen. Get carbon. You also want to pick up oxygen as well. They're going to be little red plants that oxygen are. You know, that you get oxygen from. So let's get that as well on the way. So let's go. So we made it to our starship. Look at that. It is definitely broken as you can see. But our little marker is actually over here. So this is where we need to go. Let's read this distress beacon. Scenario iteration, and that number's going to be random all the time. Boundary separation failure likely. Vessel 16 emptied. Cause sentinel intervention. Deliberate transfer. 
Analysis, fresh iteration generated, anomaly containment prepared. So let's broadcast. We got an emergency broadcast. We say, hey, we need help. Traveler anomaly detected. What? Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. So we don't know what any of that means early on. It's like, okay, what the heck is going on? But our ship is broken. Let's go investigate our ship. That's our iteration. Holy cow. Online. Atlas connection. Intermittent. Launch thrusters. Offline. Pulse engine. Offline. So we have some broken pieces on our ship. I find myself alone on a strange world, unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here and no sense of a before. But this ship at least seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch or at least to that of my exosuit. I am not dead yet and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. So we need to we need to fix this thing so we can get off this dang planet. Let's connect let, we can read a log or connect our exosuit. Either way is going to work. I'm going to connect my exosuit. Log. There we go. Unavailable. Substituting data. Exosuit. Connected. Suggestion. Pilot should perform maintenance. Select desired repair path. Let's repair it. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. So there we go. We have to fix our pulse engine and we're going to need those two parts. We need a hermetic seal and metal plating in order to fix this thing. So... Get out of our uh, ship. We need to get some parts. Okay, so in order to get metal plating, let's continue on. Go into your uh, menu. So if you press select, you'll be able to go into your menu and it'll see you know, pop up a glowing box right here. If you hit A if you're on Xbox or X if you're on PlayStation, you bring up your crafting menu and you can craft all of these things. You have the resource, you have the blueprints. You need to collect the materials in order to make it though. So, like, for dihydrogen jelly, we need 40 dihydrogen. That's the blue crystals we were picking up earlier. Metal plating, we need 50 ferrite dust. That comes from the rocks. Hey, we got enough for it, so let's make that. And we have enough, so let's get back into our uh, ship, because when you're inside, you're protected from the elements. And let's pop in the uh, metal plating, so we go to our pulse engine. Look at that, we have our metal plating. We have that checked off. Let's do that real fast. Boom! We installed the metal plating. We are good. But we need another part. We need that hermetic seal. We don't know how to make one of those yet. The iteration is functional. Starship critically damaged. Vital ingredient missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires a hermetic seal. Well, yeah, we don't know how to make that yet, so we need help. We, uh, reveals a hermetic seal is nearby. Salvage planetary chart from a distress beacon cache. Okay, so we need to get a chart. That way we can actually see where the Hermetic Seal is. Let's go over here. There should be a chart inside this capsule right here. I peer inside the beacon's housing as well as its distress beacon. It contains a planetary chart. All right, let's take it. So now we have a chart that's going to show us where the Hermetic Seal is at. Let's go over here. Planetary chart. X on Xbox will actually activate it, or Square on PlayStation if you're playing on PlayStation. There we go, we marked it. So now we know we have to go all the way over there in order to find our Hermetic Seal. Now get ready for this because there's gonna be a huge storm that comes in and it's gonna mess up your hazard protection. It gets really, really bad. So. Be ready for that. Let's go. Head on over there. We can see it's way off in the distance, so make sure you either have a lot of sodium, or if you're more advanced, you can have batteries, but you're going to need cobalt from a cave in order to make batteries. So if you had cobalt from a cave, you could totally make batteries right now. But we didn't we didn't get a cave on our intro, so we're going to have to go, you know, hardcore and just do it. Now, on our way... You're going to find a whole bunch of different stuff like, hey, we can get some of these uh, plants over here. Let's pick up that carbon. Oh, man, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. Okay, there we go. Oh, boom, boom. And we're also pick up any materials you can on the way. You see there's like cool little chili peppers over here. 
we could pick up these chili peppers and we could eat them to help our suit. So let's do that. And you're going to find different food on different planets, so you might not get chili peppers on yours. You'll have a different food depending on what kind of planet you have. I have chili peppers because mine is a hot planet. But let's try to get over there, over to the uh, decoded coordinates. We made it to the settlement. This is where our uh, hermetic seal is going to be hidden at. Oh, and we have a damaged machinery. Always try to pick these up early on. And again, you can just get rid of the item that's in here. It's a junk item. You might be able to use it later on if you really want to, but it's a waste of time. You don't really need it early, so we can get out of there. Oh, we got starship fuel out of that. Okay. We don't even have our starship working yet, but we got fuel. Let's get in here. Now that we're inside, we're... Yep. We're protected from the elements, so you want to get inside whenever you can. Let's get this hollow archive going. Accessing archive. Logs corrupted. Uh-oh. Entry follows. No one making this recording in case. Leaving behind something in the fabricator. It might be of some use. Visor damaged. Can't find my ship. Oh, no. Whoever left it here was in the same boat as us because they couldn't find their ship. So let's recover the, the supplies they left. The log finishes and the machine whirls, whirls to life, spitting out supplies. I have the hermetic seal I need to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I do now. So we got our hermetic seal and we learned the recipe. So now we, can, we know the blueprint to make one. We can make another hermetic seal if we want to, but we already have one. We're good to go. So now we need to make our, her our uh, analysis visor. So we need uh, carbon nanotubes in order to make our visor. That's the best thing, though, because in order to make a carbon nanotube, let's go back into our recipes, bring up our building menu. In order to make a carbon nanotube, you need 50 carbon, which we were picking up carbon earlier, if you were paying attention. So we have enough for making that. Let's do that real fast. And now we need to go to our multi-tool. And we need to build a visor. So let's put our visor right there where the uh, highlighted square is. Right here. Analysis visor. Boom. And because we already built our carbon nanotube, we have it. Done. So now we have a visor. And what your visor does is it actually can scan the area. So you see, we have a ton of new information here. We can scan animals, but more importantly, it will show us where our ship is, and we can actually hold X if you're on Xbox or Square or on PlayStation to tag that starship. There you go. So now we know where our starship is, and we can run back to it. We have our hermetic seal, so let's get back to our starship. Alrighty, so we made it into or back to our ship. Let's get inside. That way we can recover some of that hazard protection. Now, we need to install our hermetic seal, so let's do that. And that's the reason why I always get inside my ship. That way it can help protect you against the elements. Install that, so now our pulse engine is repaired. Yes, but now we need to repair our launch thruster. Okay. So now we need to fix that. And we need to make dihydrogen jelly. Now, I was lucky enough to run into it on the way there. So I already have, oh, I have a couple of them, but if you need to make it, all you have to do is bring up your build menu again, pressing A or X if you're on PlayStation, A if you're on Xbox. And it'll have all your list of things you can build. Dihydrogen jelly is right here, the big blue circle one. And you need 40 dihydrogen, 40 of those blue crystals we were getting earlier. And so we have plenty of those, but I've already have some, so we're good to go. We have 200 dihydrogen, so we are good to go. So now we can actually make it. So, uh, we have one. Let's install that real fast. We repaired it. But now we need to make pure ferrite. So let's get out of our ship. And in order to make pure ferrite, we're going to have to get a portable refiner. You see that right there? So, if you pr press up on your D-pad, it'll bring up your build menu. We have a brand new build menu now. But we only know how to make one thing, and that is a portable refiner right here. And so we need, it tells you the ingredients right on this list, one metal plating and 30 oxygen. So we can back out, go back into our, our uh, inventory and let's create a metal plating right here. Boom. Now we can make our uh, 
We can make our portable refinery, so let's click on that. And now we can put it wherever we want to. I would always put it right next to the ship. That way you don't forget it. Now that we've built it, let's get in there. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Number one, you need to put fuel inside of it. That way it can work. And the only fuel it takes is carbon or advanced, you know, condensed carbon, which is more advanced. I'm going to put in regular carbon because I have a lot of that. Pop it in there. All right. So now we need to put in something to make pure ferrite. So the secret is ferrite dust turns into pure ferrite when you refine it. So it goes one to one. You see that little number right there? That's how many it takes to use. It, that's how many materials it takes to make one. So it takes one ferrite dust to make one pure ferrite. So let's start that up right there. And we're good. So in, at the bottom right hand side, you see we only need 50 pure ferrite. So we can stop it right now. We don't need that much. We can keep some of our regular ferrite dust. Let's put that on our exosuit. You just have to pick it up and pop it into your exosuit. And we can leave right now. And before you go, if you click the right thumbstick, you can pick up your portable refiner and take it with you. That way you don't have to leave it here permanently. Let's jump inside of our ship. And now we have the pure ferrite to fix it. So let's do that. Our launch thruster will be fixed. Yeah, we're good. Ship is repaired. Launch systems are online. Let's take off. So that's going to be right trigger if you're on uh, if you're on console. Let's do it. So yeah, we're flying now. Now we have our, our starship is totally fixed. I love it. Now, if you don't like first person, like I don't, and you generally do, all you have to do is hit your uh, down on your D-pad, go all the way over to your gear icon right here, utilities, and you can choose between all of these different options, but right here it says switch starship view. So now we're in third person. So I like flying in third person. So whichever your preference is, that's how you could do that. So let's fly up into the stars and leave the planet. There we go. You discover this. I discover this because you, you're in your own system. No one's ever been here before, more than likely. And so let's keep going. Now it's going to tell you how to use your starship. So, you know, hold down your uh, right trigger to thrust like normal. Okay. That's your normal, like, basically your gas pedal right there. Now, if you press B or uh, O if you're on PlayStation, B if you're on Xbox, you do an extra thrust. That way you can really go fast. Now, it makes, you, it makes it harder to turn, but you're going much faster. You see how the stars are moving? But there's one even faster than that. That's your pulse drive. And that's by holding down R1 and, R and L1 at the same time or right bumper, left bumper at the same time. So let's do that. It charges up, and then boom, you're fired off. You're good to go. So now you're going really fast. So yeah, we've done all our basics, and now we're getting a call. What is this call about? Incoming transmission source 4925B. Please identify yourself. I'm, and it breaks apart. Okay, let's identify ourselves. You are not alone. Follow the, and we don't know what the heck is going on here. Follow the what? The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. Let's put those coordinates in and see what's going on. What does it want us to go? All right. All right, right there in front of us on this other planet all the way over here. So let's pulse drive over there and see what's going on. So we're coming up to the source right here. All right, let's land. Now... The source is kind of corrupted, so we don't know where exactly the source is coming from. We need to get out of our starship, and now we need to scan with our sweeper to look around on where the source actually is. So, we have our visor already named and ready to go, so let's pull up our visor, and it'll go into sweeping mode, which will tell you, hey, look, the thing you're looking for is in this direction. You see how it glows over to the left? Now, if I go way too far... It'll glow over to the right, so it kind of tells you the general area of where you're supposed to go. So let's head in this direction. Let's see what's going on. Now, I, I like to just pull it up periodically, like every once in a while, just to make sure I know where I'm going. Let's pull it up again. Yep, we're going in the right direction. Oh, what's over here? You'll see if you're close enough, it'll do that. It'll scan and boom! 
That's where the signal's coming from. Perfect. All right. So let's get over here and see what is going on. Oh, it's a broken module. Let's see. The sparking wires of the machine generate a signal tapping out its broadcast into the void. Wherever the uh, message... Whoever left the message is long gone. All right, let's do it. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. Entry 4925. No fuel. Fail to reach the station. Hazard protection is low. No choice but to something underground. Deployed a base computer. As well as a log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. All right, those are two tools we're going to need. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. Let's get those plans. All right, so now we know how to make a base computer. And we know how to make a terrain manipulator. A terrain manipulator is very, very, very useful. So we need to build that right away. Let's go into our menu. And we go to our, over to our multi-tool because the terrain manipulator has to be put onto our multi-tool. You see how it's highlighted this square right here. Let's install it. And we choose the terrain manipulator. We're going to need two carbon nanotubes and one dihydrogen jelly. All right. So we have the dihydrogen jelly already. But if you again, if you need it, it's 40 dihydrogen crystals. The blue crystals that are on the ground. But we need to make two carbon nanotubes. So let's go over to our exosuit menu. And let's see. Okay, we have 194 carbon. We should be able to make it. So let's go to our crafting menu. And carbon nanotubes. There you go. And if you hit RB or R1, if you know, hit your bumpers or your R1, L1, you can actually see at the bottom of the screen, I can build two, three, four. You know, it'll tell you how many you can build. I can only build up to three because it takes 300 or 150 carbon. Well, we only need two, so let's build two. There we go. We have two now. We go back over to our multi-tool. Let's, let's install it, and we'll be good to go. Terrain manipulator installed. So now we can dig underground. So why this is useful is, like, if there's something underground, like here. We have buried technology right here. Let's dig underground. Right trigger. Look at that! We have the thing right now. We can dig underground. Now, it is just like Minecraft in the way that there is a bottom floor, a bedrock. You can't dig all the way through the planet. I wish, but you cannot do that. There is a bedrock that you cannot dig past. But what we need to do is we need to gather some copper. That way we can make our base computer. Let's pull up our visor and we're looking for... You see that cool, like, diamond shape right there? That means there's a deposit of materials there, but we're not looking for magnetized ferret. We're looking for copper. Up oh, right there. See, there's copper right there. So let's mark it by holding down X or square if you're on PlayStation. And let's go over there. We, now we know that there's a copper deposit right over there. Let's go get it. All right. We made it to our copper deposit. And the way you switch out your multi-tool items is you hit Y on Xbox or triangle on PlayStation. And you'll switch between all your different things. So you have your mining beam and you're now your terrain manipulator since we just made that. Now, the other big thing to notice is if you have your terrain manipulator out, hit left bumper and right bumper or L1 and R1 and you'll see this big circle come up, right? So that is how much you're going to mine from this resource. That's how big your uh, terrain manipulator beam is going to be. Now, in general... The smaller it is, the more resources you will get. The bigger it is, the faster it'll mine. So let's look at the biggest one here. It'll do boom right there. It'll make a big old hole like that. But if you make a small, the smallest one by hitting L1 or R1 or L1 or a left bumper, it'll make a little tiny hole like that. See? Now, the benefit is the smaller it is, the more resources you get, but it uses more fuel. You'll see? Look at that. I'm getting a ton of copper, and I'm barely, you know, using up the resource, the deposit. Look at that. And so you're good to go. Now, the the bad part is if you want to just get rid of it really fast, like if you're making a, uh, a home base and you want to flatten it or get rid of a piece of ground, go to the bigger one and hit it once. Look at this. Boom. But I only got eight copper for that. So you don't get that many resources. So definitely go... Go for the smaller one. You'll get a lot more resources that way. So let's get some resources here. Let's get some copper. 
All right, so I mined all of that copper. Look at that big old hole I just left. Eh, that's okay, but look, if we go back into our inventory, I got 600 copper out of there. 662 to be precise. Way more than we need, but we're going to need this for later on. So, we stocked up. Now we need to make chromatic metal. And in order to do that, we need to build, bring out our refiner again. So remember, hit your, up on your D-pad. We know how to make a base computer now, but we can't make it yet. We need chromatic metal. So let's pull out our refiner and pop that baby down right there. And if we go into our refiner menu, remember, you got to put some fuel in there first. So let's drop 100 carbon in there. And then we have to put our copper in here. Because we can convert our copper into chromatic metal. Now remember what I told you. This little small number will tell you, okay, it takes two copper to make one chromatic metal. So we are going to use all of this. Let's do it. Boom! Now, keep in mind, it's going to take about two minutes to convert all of that. So we're turning our 600 copper into 300 chromatic metal. So while we wait for that to happen, let me show you what else you could do. So there's going to be different animals. Like you see that, those tentacles over there. It's kind of creepy coming out of the ground. You can actually scan that and make money. So if you pull out your visor, you see there's a red dot on it, right? Well, if you press your right trigger, it'll actually scan it. And we just got $3,000 for scanning it. And not only that... We scan it from there. If you press your pause menu, not your uh, inventory, but your pause, you know, you can see a whole bunch of different information here. But if you go over to your discoveries, way over here on your discovery tab, it has your planet and all the stuff you found on this planet so far. So let's go to our fauna, which is our animals. And here we go. We have our animals. We have our tentacle animal right here. This is our tentacle animal. We can actually upload it, and we can name it. So if you press Y or triangle if you're on PlayStation, Y if you're on Xbox, it'll let you rename it anything you want. So let's rename it. Let's put it as a tentacle monster. And then we accept it. There we go. And we got paid five nanites in order to name that thing. So, of course, you want to do that. And you can upload all of your, your different... Uh, your different discoveries. You can upload all the rocks you scan, all the animals, and all the plants you scan, and you can even upload your an your uh, your planet that you've scanned. So definitely go in here, and you can just hit this and it says upload all. You could do that if you don't want to rename it. If you don't care about renaming it, you could just do that, and it will it'll upload all the default names. You don't have to, or you could just reload, or you can rename it before you do that. Look at that. Now I cannot change the name. Once you've uploaded it, it is locked in. You cannot change the name once you've uploaded it. So be careful. If you want to change the name, do it then. So let's get back in here. We should be good now. And yep. We are good. So yeah, we have our 331 chromatic metal. And let's pick up our refiner now. So now we are good. Now we need to build our base computer... But remember, when you build your base computer, it is going to make a base around that location. So let's find a good location for this base computer. All right. I got on top of this rock right here, this gigantic tall rock. I think this is going to be a great place for a uh, base. So let's do that right now. Build, pull up our build menu. Pick our base computer. We have 30 chromatic metal, so we can build it. Let's pop it right there. Boom. So now we have our base computer out. Let's go activate it. And searching cartographic archives. Universal archive search reveals no prior claims because no one's built a base here. So we can claim our base right here. There you go. And it's going to show you the area around you. I love it. Look at that. It's so cool. So now we have archives. So we're going to be able to learn some stuff from our base computer. Let's get in there. Accessing log from previous user. Entry 4925D follows. Storm sweeping across, but construction supplies low. Depositing shelter plans. I need to get back soon. So there, I, we can extract their plans that they left. So we found out how to make timber, all these different timber air, uh, opponent, components for a base. So now we can make our own little like mini base. So let's do that real fast. So you press up on your D-pad. Now we have a whole bunch of stuff in our build menu. 
So we have our, you know, timber floors, timber walls. So let's do a floor real fast. We need to make our own little base real fast. So let's do that. Wow. I need more carbon. Oh, no. We need to go get some more carbon. So I'm going to go do that real fast. I'll be right back. All righty. I am back with a whole bunch more cop or uh, cope. Uh, not car carbon. There we go. We're going to make some more floors. I always like to, uh, to get in there. Oh, yeah. I forgot to show you guys. So if you go into your build menu, you can select whichever piece you want to use. Let's put a floor. And if you click in your left thumbstick, you actually go into a, a third camera. So you, a free camera that you can kind of go around and look and go, okay, there we go. Boom. So I'm going to build a like little four piece. Let's go in and make some walls. Oh, no, we have a storm coming. We need to make some walls quick. Boom. There we go. Now, you don't have to build all of this. I generally do because I like to have... A, uh, a like a little base of operations, but you don't have to build all of this. All you have to do is put down six different pieces and you're good to go. So let's actually uh, build a roof. Boom, 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 boom. And we need to make a doorway. So let's put our door right in front. There we go. So now we have our own little box right here and let's get in here. So now we're protected from the elements so we can get in here to kind of help out our hazard protection, whatever you want to do. But we have to get to our uh, computer to do our next step in the process, so let's do that. Accessing log from previous user, additional archives recovered. Entry follows. Construction largely a success. Recovered salvage data from nearby. Plans logged. Scans indicate additional subterranean devices. Begin search. So let's extract those plans. Whoever recorded these logs evidently had some success. I have access to their plans and perhaps I can learn from their efforts. So now we know how to make a construction research unit. Okay. We need magnetized ferrite and carbon nanotubes. Let's get into our, uh, our base right here. All right. So we need to get magnetized ferrite, but we need to refine ferrite in order to get that. So let's go back into our menu. We need construction research unit, but we can't make that yet. Let's put a portal refiner down. And you can leave it here if you want to, because it's inside. It's more safe. I'm going to pop that thing right down there. Let's in get into it. Give it some ga some fuel. Boom. And now, in order to make uh, magnetized ferrite, you need to turn pure ferrite into it. But we don't have very much pure ferrite. So to get around that, let's put our regular ferrite in there. Ferrite dust. Let's make a whole bunch of that. Because we're going to need to get a whole bunch of uh, pure ferrite to make magnetized ferrite. Let's get to 100. I think 100 should be good. Boom. Oh, look at that. It was perfect. I literally landed on it. All right. So we can get rid of the ferrite dust. Put that back in our suit. Pick up the pure ferrite and pop it over in the input. Now, look at that. It takes two pure ferrite in order to make one magnetized ferrite. So let's do that. And it takes a little bit longer because it takes two of them to make one. But we're still making a lot of progress. We're good to go. And we should be good. Boom. We, that's all the magnetized ferret we need. Let's put that in our suit. We're good now. Now we need to make carbon nanotubes. Again, we have enough carbon. We should be able to do that. So let's make one. And so now we can make our research unit. So in our build menu up on the D-pad. It's going to be under that first tab, construction unit, right here. Let's pop it down. I always like to put my stuff in the corner. I don't know why. That's just my thing, I guess. Let's activate it. Let's see what's going on here. Analysis unit online. Diagnostic suggestion. Users should recover salvage data from buried technology. Equip and utilize an al analysis visor. So let's go to research buildable technology. So this is where we're going to be able to learn how to build our base parts, okay? So we have four salvage data, but we're gonna need some more. So let's unlock the teleport module right fast, right there, boom. And then let's let's get unlock our uh, biofuel reactor. So we have enough for that, boom. And then our electrical wiring, we're gonna need to use on both of those. That it costs zero, so we can get that right from the get go. There we go. Boom. 
And we have one left. We're gonna save that for later. So we have one salvage data. We're gonna leave that for later. So we have all of this stuff. But now we need to rename our base. Let's get in here and rename our base. Let's do it. So our base, we're gonna put, we're gonna name it. So let's go up here to our name right here. Click on that and we can name it anything we want that is okay by Hello Games. Remember, they have a filter, so don't say anything terrible. We're going to call this our Hilltop Base. And accept it. And what we can do, now that we, we've made the base, we can upload it. We can also capture a new base screenshot if you want to, so let's do that. And we can literally go into camera mode, and let's get a close-up of this thing. So, boom, right there. So that's our new picture. That's what we, we will see, and we're going to upload it. Now it'll upload to the servers. We're good to go. Let's get over here. So now we need to make our teleporter. So we need four metal plating, as you can see from the bottom right-hand side. This will give you all the updates on what you need to do. So let's make four metal plating. One, two, three, four. There we go. Now we also need to make... What do we need to make? We need to make carbon nanotubes so we need to make two of those one two there we go and we need sodium oh no we, we're out of sodium we only have 16 so we need to go find yellow plants so let's go find some sodium all righty so i got all the pieces i need let's pull it up all right so we need to build our base teleporter put that over here in the corner boom yeah we built it but now it's not powered. We need power for it. No! So we need to make our uh, biofuel reactor. So let's get in here in our uh, power tab. We're going to need metal plating and oxygen. We have oxygen, but we need metal plating. So let's make more metal plating right here. Boom. Now we can make our biofuel reactor. Now this is like a generator, so I'm going to put it outside. I don't want to breathe in all those toxic fumes so now we have our uh, our biofuel reactor but we need to connect it with wire so go into our, our uh, build menu again go to the wire now we need to connect it inside so we need to connect the wire here and we need to go inside so we got to go through our door to get inside and we need to connect it to the, biofuel, the uh, teleporter boom right there so now it's connected. We're all good, right? Well, the problem is we need to make some energy. We need to actually make some uh, electricity. And so it needs fuel in order to do that. We're going to need to pop in some of that. We can drop it by pressing X. If you're on Xbox or Square, it'll drop some. So you see how I have 141 if I press it again? 70 if I press it again. 35, it'll cut it in half. That way you don't put all of your resources in the fuel tank. There you go. So we did it! It is fueled! Let's get in here and look at the beautiful, glorious teleporter being electrified as all the electricity it needs. So we are set. Explore the planet and expand your base. We've done all the tutorials for that so far. I like it. So now what do we need to do? We need to go to check in with our logs to see what's going on here. Accessing logs from previous user. Additional archives recovered. Entry 4925 follows. Scanner detected unusual broadcast. Repeating 16 from the space station. Warning. End of archive. Rec records interrupted. The base computer archives have reached their end. It seems there is nothing more I will learn from them. My predecessor appears to have left their base and headed to the space station. Well, let's go to the space station then. Let's get into our uh, our ship and let's go to the space station. So once you get into space, you'll be able to see the space station. Let's get up here. And you'll see it's tagged over here. It's that yellow like stop sign hexagon over here. And so if you use your pulse drive, it'll automatically take you over there. So hit your... LB and RB, or R1 and L1, at the same time, hold them down. 
Boom! There you go. And we'll get there in a few seconds. Let's get into the space station. Oh, yeah. Listen to that music. Oh, yeah. I love that rock theme when you get in here for the first time. But now we have to go talk to some aliens and figure out what that transmission was about. So let's get on over here and let's talk to some aliens and see what's going on. Hey, alien guy. Do you know about the number 16? Oh, see, we don't know any of their language at all. That's why all these words are all gibberish. Despite their f unfamiliar words, there's something about this alien's manner that implies we have met before. Perhaps they know the one who came before me. Let's ask them about travelers, yes. The life form pauses before turning away. They either did not hear me or are choosing to ignore the question. Uh-oh. Ignoring the question. What's going on? That's suspicious. Let's talk to you. Another thing is all in gibberish. I haven't learned their language. The alien's elegant metallic shell springs to life as I approach. They study me, lights flashing around their visor. Perhaps they know something about the messages left at the base computer. Yes. A glazed look passes over the life form's visor. The number has some strange effect on them. They seem reluctant to speak further. What is going on? Everyone's treating me like I'm crazy. What the heck is going on? Hey, you. Do you know about the number 16? The metallic being chatters away, pouring forth words in a language I cannot understand. But when I blink, I see that same red light that stared at me at the distress beacon. All right, 16. We are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. What? Okay. Though the alien speaks, the words are not their own. A string of code is echoed back to me through the red glare, logged directly into my exosuit. The crimson light fades away, and I see the life form staring at me through its visor. Whatever happened, they do not appear to have seen it. I should leave. Perhaps my base computer would be able to make something of this code. Okay. So we got the code. Now we need to get the heck out of here. Everyone thinks I'm crazy. But before we do, you can actually come over here to the kiosk. Because on the space station, you can buy and trade items. So let's go over here. And we see we can buy all this stuff, but we can sell some stuff too. So we have a lot of stuff in our inventory we can sell right now. Let's sell the salvage data because it's 53,000. Let's do that. Sulfur urine, we don't need that yet. That's some of the materials we picked up when we were mining down there. Uh, ammonia, uh, let's sell that because we only have 23 anyway. Let's sell that. Let's go through. We don't need Mordite yet. We can sell that. We don't need the Fecium. We don't, we can sell that. Uh, Corvax casing, we can sell that. And so everything else we, we're probably going to need a little bit later on. So let's keep all this stuff, but we can also buy some stuff. And I would highly recommend the first things you should buy are life support gels. Buy as many as you can. And batteries. There should be batteries here. Okay, ion batteries. Buy as much as you can. You can use those two things a lot. So definitely buy those. And while we're here and we have the money, let's buy some microprocessors. It's going to come up handy later on in the playthrough. So let's buy five of these. Oh, no, I can only buy three. Dang it. I should have saved my money and bought that. That's okay. We'll buy three of them. Microprocessors. That's all we can afford. So we're good on that. Let's actually see what we could sell. Can we sell anything else? So, because we need to get those microprocessors. Let's sell our chromatic metal. All right. We can always make more of that. So let's sell that. And now we need to buy two more microprocessors. You need a total of five because you're going to need that later on. So let's buy two more. Now we have a total of five. We are good to go. We also, we could buy chlorine, but that's going to be later on. So don't worry about that yet. So we're good. We are solid on that. So now let's head back to our base computer. And because we made a teleporter, actually, we don't even have to fly down there. We can use the teleporter right here. Oh, milestone accomplished because we sold items. We just became a space trucker because we were selling items. Heck yeah. All right, let's go to the space station terminal. Terminal. And our hilltop base right here. We can go back to our base right here. Let's go do that. Yeah, so we landed back here. Oh, no, we don't have any power for it, but that's okay. We can always power it up later on. But we were able to use it to get back, so that's okay. Let's hit our base computer and see what's going on. 
Archives terminated. Select a new task. Yeah, we have a we have a signal we need to decrypt. So yeah, decoding 16 16 16. Message follows. The traveler finds their wings. Fly to us and claim your place among the stars. Well, yes, let's go do that. So let's find our, uh, where did our, uh, starship go? Usually it'll be here with you. I don't know where it went, though. Oh, but it's down here. Wait a minute, it's not down there. What the heck? My starship? That's my starship? Okay, let's see if I can land on it. <laughs> this is my starship. Okay. So this is brand new. I've never done that before. That's kind of cool. Let's go. And then we have a distress signal over here. Let's go over there. And so if you want to fly faster, go out in the outer, outer atmosphere. So you see this cloud layer right here? This is where the atmosphere ends. And so you can go right above it. And as soon as you get outside of the atmosphere, you can actually fly way faster than if you are in the atmosphere. Look at that. It was a minute. Now it's like, what, five seconds or whatever? Yeah, there you go. Now, this is going to lead us to a crashed freighter, but guess what? It doesn't know where exactly it is, but you can kind of tell. You see? It's right there. So, instead of actually using our sweeper to find the signal, we can actually just land on this. So, let's land over here. I mean, you can go land on that, that part of the uh, planet and then use your sweeper to come over here, but I find it's way easier just to come over here. So, we've landed here. Yep, there you go. There's a signal right here. So, let's see what's going on. Log damaged. Partial records available. The signal has led me to the wreck of a freighter. Colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Were these messages nothing but the misfiring circuits of a long forgotten ruin? Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log blinking an awaiting input. Let's do it. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. Well, let, let's take the hyperdrive. I pull the blueprint from the computer, but this hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. Oh, very suspicious. So this hyperdrive fits in my starship. Okay. And we need chromatic metal. I should not have sold my chromatic metal. Dang it. Well, lesson to you, we need a uh, chromatic metal, which means I need to find some more uh, copper. So now I have my uh, chromatic metal again. Jeez, I can't believe I sold it all. So let's get in here, get some protection going, and we need to install our hyperdrive. Now, what I would always recommend is put your technology in the technology slot. You have two different inventories in your starship. You have your general inventory where you can put anything you want, and then your technology where you can only put technology. Any upgrades for your starship? So let's do that. Hyperdrive, boom. And we need our five microprocessors. That's why we spent money to buy those earlier, even though I sold my chromatic metal like an idiot. But we also have our chromatic metal, 125. We got it, so we're good, right? There we go, we built our hyperdrive. It's installed. Perfect. But now the problem is, we don't have any fuel for our hyperdrive. So let's take off and see what's going on. Diagnostics report. Hyperdrive successfully installed. Hyperdrive fuel status is empty. Oh no. My hyperdrive is complete. Perhaps I really will find the answers out amidst the stars. But without warp cells, I will be going nowhere. I need to find a source of antimatter. Let's tune our scanner. So we need to scan for our antimatter. So let's hit the uh, left thumbstick in. And that'll point us in the direction. Uh-oh. Oh, we need to go higher. We're not high enough. So let's get outside in into orbit. That way we can really get a good scan going on. So let's, now we're outside in the orbit. Let's do it again. There we go. We found the location of it. Where is it at? It's over here on this planet, so let's go over there and get some warp or antimatter. We got it! Alright, it's here. We just need to zoom in. And it's gonna take us a little bit to get there, but the reason why you do this is, I mean, I can go buy a warp cell if I wanted to. 
this will teach you how to make it on your own so you don't even have to buy it you can just make it through the crafting menu in your inventory so this is highly highly recommended you want to go and do all of this it takes a little bit of time but you can do it this way and you'll know forever you'll have the recipe memorized so we want to land here but there's a building right in front of me so i'm guessing that's where we need to go oh this is a airless planet so this is low gravity there we go right here that's where we need to go So this is where the blueprint's gonna be, and this is an abandoned building you'll see from the eggs out here. Now these eggs are very scary, watch out for these eggs, because if you do this, let me show you, you can actually harvest these eggs and make a lot of nanites, which is a really rare money, but you'll have to pay for it. Look at these, oh no, monsters coming out of the ground, so get inside, get inside as quick as you can, oh god. That way they don't, they don't kill you, because they will attack you until you die, so. You don't want to do that. Well, now we're inside. Let's actually get to the terminal real fast. There we go. Get rid of the goop that's here. Again, you can keep it, but I think it's a waste of time. It's not really worth it, so we'll get rid of that. Terminal online. Selecting key. Decrypting. Success. The terminal is clogged with an unnerving pulsating slime. Nevertheless, it appears to function. As I touch the input panel, the alien substance reacts violently. I make note not to get closer. Oof. The device opens, revealing a single unblinking crimson eye. It prints out a blueprint for antimatter accompanied by a strange message. Like, yeah, let's take the blueprint. You will find us when the time is right. 16, again, 16 keeps popping up. 16 is very important for this game, but we know how to make antimatter now, woo. So we could totally do that, except we need some more uh, condensed carbon. So let's put our portable refiner down right there. And if we go in here, we can actually fuel it with regular carbon or condensed carbon. We need condensed carbon. So let's put regular carbon in there. And if we actually get more carbon, put it in here, we can make regular carbon into condensed carbon with our refiner. So of course you want to do that. It'll be great. We'll get enough condensed carbon so we can make a ton of antimatter. That way we can make some warp cells and uh, refuel our hyperdrive. So we're almost done here. There we go. Good to go. And then we'll pick up our uh, portable refiner again. So now in our menu, we can go into our crafting menu. Let's go to craft. We need to make antimatter. And we also need to go in and craft in a different spot an antimatter housing. We need to house that antimatter. That way we can do it. Now we have those two items. Now we can make our warp cell. So we have our menu here. We have a lot of items now. We're starting to get a lot of recipes, or a lot of blueprints. Warp cell. Boom! There we go. So now we have a warp cell. We can refuel our uh, starship right here. Boom. Oh, we're too far away. We need to get closer to our starship. That way we can refuel it. So let's go do that real fast. Where's our starship at? Oh yeah, we parked way over here. Let's go do that. Yeah, low gravity, I like it. See, there's way, there's different planets and they all are pretty awesome. So let's get over here. Now that we're in here, we can make our, uh... oh no, we can make some more antimatter. So let's do that real fast. We can make a lot more, so boom. All right, so we have a couple in here already. We have three, so let's pick it up and put it into our hyperdrive. There you go, now we're fueled. Now we need to go into space and learn how to use it. So one is, once you're in space, you can actually get to the uh, warp map, the galaxy map. So you press down on your D-pad, go over to the cool like black hole looking thing. It says galaxy map, select that. And now we are in the galaxy map. Look at this. This is all the different stars. Every little light is a star system that you can go to. Now we have a very small hyperdrive. That's why we can't really go that far yet, but you can upgrade that thing and you could go tons of places later on. But for now, what we're gonna do is, oh yeah, and by the way, once you, when you open up the map, you're kind of locked in. Like you can't really move anything like that. But the way to, to unlock your uh, vision is to either press B on Xbox, or if you're on PlayStation, press O, 
Once you do that, it will unlock it. You'll see that went away. So now we can look anywhere we want to go. Anywhere you want to go. So let's go over here to this one. That one's next in line. Let's go over here. So we're going to a new system now. This is going to be great. And it looks like it was a Gek system, so I could deal with that. I like the Gek. The Gek are my favorite race. I don't know about you guys, but I love the Gek. And we made it. So we're in a new system. Now we need to know what, what is going on. How, what are we supposed to do here now that we're here? Starship monitoring system reports error. Guidance system malfunction. Searching for other routes. Searching. Searching. Obtained. Destination in 16. <laughs> kill a, kill a light. Kill a, kill a length. I don't even know what that is. New guidance. Yes, accept it. Plotting the route. All right, so now we have a route for something else. Where are we going? A uh, fuel source. We need more fuel for our hyperdrive because you use a lot of it when you're warping to different systems. So now we have a new fuel source right here. Let's go get it. Now again, they're going to mark a weird location, but what we're looking for is a building around here because there's going to be some kind of a building we have to go to. And it looks like it's going to be right down here. So let's actually go here. We're going to beat the uh, system and we're gonna actually going to just go down here by our own self, basically. Let's land. Get out, and we're going to be going towards this building. There you go. Look at that. Yep, it was the building. We're scanning it. That's the building we were supposed to go to. Now, also, keep in mind, these stones right here, these, like, pillars that have a circle on them, this will teach you the language of the race in the system. So let's do this. Hi, hi, hi. Voy, voy, voy. The stone resonates, producing a sound that fills my mind. A vision begins to take shape. A small alien life form kneels before me. They are tired, beaten. Without meeting my gaze, they offer up their hand. You can accept the knowledge, so you're accepting the word that they're going to show you. The name Gek floats in my vision, an echo of a strange vision I just experienced. A word in this alien tongue is seared into my brain. So now we learn the Gek word for Gek. So that is how you learn the different words of all the different races. That way when you talk to them, you understand what they're trying to say. So it's really cool. But let's get our fuel from here. This structure is unlike anything I've encountered on my journey so far. Everything about it is so obviously alien, so obviously out of place. As I stare at it, words form themselves in my mind. A strange fragment of broken speech. Is it traveler? Is it friend? I'm a traveler, yes. It feels strange responding to questions I'm unsure that I'm being asked. But something has clearly taken notice of my reply. I am overwhelmed by the sense that something has awoken, that someone is watching me. It forms another question. Is it first? Is it last? I'm the first one here, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm first. I do not know how I'm being spoken to. This monolith is ancient, and I cannot escape the feeling it has asked these questions many times over. It asks again, Have they seen the Crimson Eye? Has the Crimson Eye seen them? I have seen the Crimson Eye. Likelihood of anomaly exceed safety parameters. Breach detected. Alert. Alert. The boundaries fall. The walls collapse. Your universe awaits. Find us, traveler. All right. So that is weird. And we got our warp cell. So now we can refuel our uh, starship. I need to find out. I fell down this hole, right? Oh, no, no. I went over here. Duh. Look at the aliens on this one. Look at that. I love it. Now, you can make some uh, carbon pellets. Let's look at that. We can probably make some carbon pellets, right? No, I can't make carbon pellets yet. No. We'll come back for you. All right. Let's go into space and see what's going on. And we can actually refuel our... Uh, oh, no, our launch thruster needs to be refueled. Let's do that first. And uh, we need metal plating. All right, let's make metal plating. There we go. That way our launch thruster is full. But our hyperdrive, we have our one warp cell we need to put in our hyperdrive. So let's do that. Done. Now let's go up into space.
Explore nearby planets or search for a new system. Okay. So let's go to our galaxy map. And let's go back to where our base was before. So if you press B or a zero O if you're on PlayStation. Let's go back to our system. We know our base is here because we have our little base sim symbol right there. So let's go. Let's go back there. So we're back in our original system. Okay, I'll take that. And we're we are activating our primary mission. Okay. Well, let's head back to our uh, base. Oh, we have a we have a message coming in. Incoming transmission. Source unknown. You are not alone. Please identify yourself. I'm and it breaks up. Oh no. So identify yourself again. You left me. Why did you? I don't understand. What the heck's going on? I didn't leave you. Of course you'd say that. Of course you would. Just like the others. Uh, what about the others? What is going on here? There is no reply. The communicator falls silent. Though the channel remains open. Oh, we we the channel is open, so we know where it is. Where is it coming from? Oh, it's coming from right here. Let's go over here. The stranger's coordinates. What is going on over here? So this is our original planet that we were on. We built our base on this planet right here. Let's see what's going on. And again, they're going to give you a random location, but you're going to be looking for either a building or something nearby. I think I see the building right over there. So let's actually land over here. No, that's way far away, so maybe not. All right, let's land over here. Maybe it'll be that building, but we'll find out once we get out and start doing our sweeper. And it's, um... No, 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 it's not that building. Okay, I would have been wrong if I landed at that building. We're going over here. Oh, come on. Terrible shoulder boost. Now, if you don't know how to do a shoulder boost, let me show you. So if you're running, you click in your stick to run, and you have a melee attack on RB or R1. You see that melee attack? The trick is you have to melee attack and then use your jetpack immediately afterwards. And so let's do that real fast. So over here, we're going to run, melee attack, melee attack, and then immediately you're going to use your uh, jump. So jump. There you go, see? And it takes a little bit of practice, but once you've done it a few times, you know how to do it. So again, run, punch, and then jetpack. Immediately afterwards, punch and then jetpack like a split second later. But you gotta make sure you do your punch first. That way you do your cool little thrust. Oh, what is this? There's a crashed ship here. Another one just like mine. Mine was crashed like that, so let's see what's going on. We have to fix this, so we need chromatic metal five. And then sodium five, so that's easy enough, really simple. Buzz, buzz. There are no signs of life. There is only the static of a broken communicator. Let's extract those records. Whatever message was once here has been scrambled beyond recovery. All I extract is a pilot's name, Artemis. Whoever they were, they are long gone. The only other uncorrupted data is a set of plans. An upgrade for my mining beam. Alright, so now we have an upgrade for your mining beam. Let's do that real fast. So we need to make our mining beam. Let's do that. So if we go into install our technology, we have... We need c carbon nanotubes, a hermetic seal, and wiring loom. We can make the carbon nanotubes and the hermetic seal, but the wiring loom you have to buy at the space station. So let's do that real fast. We can make our uh, hermetic seal is down here. You're going to need 30 condensed carbon. We got that. And then we need to make some uh, carbon nanotubes. Oh, we don't have any carbon. We need to get some carbon, actually. So we can put our hermetic seal in here real fast. Let's get some carbon. Actually, you know what? Let's go to the space station. Now, number one, you can fix this uh, ship and take it if you want to. So let's do that real quickly. Oh, it's an A-Class. You definitely want to take this thing. So let's take it real fast. We're going to claim it. Now, we're going to go to the uh, space station, but first we need to fix our ship. And remember, we need a hermetic seal and metal plating, so let's do that like we did with our original uh, ship. And we're also going to need a microprocessor. No, 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 no. Sorry. Launch thruster is good. So we just need a hermetic seal, which we need condensed carbon for. 
So technically, actually, we're going to get some condensed carbon real fast. So let's get some carbon and we can refine it into condensed carbon. So let's do that. All right, so we have the condensed carbon. Let's get in here and do it again. We need to make a hermetic seal. So let's do that. So now we can fix this thing. Let's do it. Hermetic seal. Pulse engine is repaired. So now we are good to go. So let's go. Now this thing is still really broken, as you can tell. We have a whole bunch of broken pieces here. You can fix it, but what I'm going to say is don't fix it. We're going to break this thing. We're going to sell this for parts. And so you don't need to fix it after that. So all you need to do is get your, uh, your thing going. Oh, no, we have an unknown contact. What's going on here? Artemis Entity, we received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? Oh, they think I'm Artemis. Wait a minute, they think I'm Artemis. Time for truth. You have their signal, but you are not Artemis Entity. Yeah, I'm not. They probably think I am because they stole his ship. Your signal is familiar to Nada. We have been in contact before, I think. This would be a good time to come aboard. Yes, a proper introduction to our home. Oh, look at that. So there you go. We have a space anomaly. So let's land on the space anomaly first. Oh, we definitely need to land there first because we have incoming pirates to get us. So we need to get out of here. Let's land on this space anomaly. So the space anomaly is a great place for you to buy upgrades and talk to other uh, players. If you have multiplayer turned on, you can get missions here. This is a really big part of the early game. So you definitely want to get in here. Now, the key for this is you need to explore and do some Space Anomaly missions in order to call it in whenever you want. So let's go over here. We need to talk to Nada and Polo up here. So let's go all the way up here. Now, generally, I would just fly up there, but my, my uh, jetpack is not upgraded yet. So you probably can't get up there normally anyway. But let's keep going. Go all the way up here. You look at there's other... Uh, NPCs, other travelers all over the place. But let's go over here and we'll talk to Nada and Polo and we'll get some stuff done over here. So we gotta talk to Polo or Nada first. I'm sorry, Nada. I am Priest Entity Nada, Diversion Corvax. Welcome to our anomaly. Our home is here is pleasant, yes? Polo's own design, a perfect bubble. Beyond the Sentinels, beyond the vengeful Corvax. Nada watches time come and go. What about Artemis? You thought I was Artemis, right? A traveler entity. Perhaps they are known to you. I do not know their number. Nada does not care to think about iterations as numbers. They were lost to us. Highly improbable. Our anomaly is lost to the Sentinels, but none should be lost to the anomaly. The Corvax watches me. There is a pa patience, an organic tilt to, to the way they hold their metal shell. But what about you? Nada awoke with the death of the Corvax Prime. Could not understand why such things happen. We were not, we were, we were all, why we were alone? I can't read. Sorry, guys. Now I am divergent. The convergence do not see through my eyes. Nada is not alone anymore. Nada is with Polo friend. Now many other friends visit. Our convergence is small, but Nada is happy. So there's a convergence here. All the players come to the space anomaly. Nada's carapace pulses with a gentle light. There is something familiar about them. Ask about Polo. Polo friend found Nada, found my signal. Nada is safe. Now Nada finds other signals and makes others safe. So other travelers. The station has been calling to me since I awoke on the planet. Perhaps it's called Artemis as well. So Artemis was feeling it too. What about the space station? Beyond what is outside, our anomaly wanders free. Free like Nada to observe and to search. The Sentinels, the Atlas, they do not care for this place. I feel their eyes hunting us. Nada watches me, judging my reactions as they speak. All right. Speak with Polo, friend traveler. Perhaps they might know more about missing Artemis. They perceive things more clearly than Nada. So Polo is the Gek over here. He's like the co-pilot to, to Nada. I like Polo. Polo is my favorite character. Friends everywhere, if only you know where to look. Friends in all shapes and all sizes and all places. Artemis friend, you are where they should be. Does not seem possible. But all things are possible. Such is the universe. We will find them, no doubt. There is always a signal, always a trace. Well, ask how. How do I find Artemis? Our home will set, see it to, our home will see to it. 
When you leave, you will not be where you were. You will be closer. Or maybe not. Discovery is exciting, yes? <laughs> okay, Polo, what is going on here? Before you leave, perhaps spend some time with the other friends. We all help each other here. So now they want you to go and talk to people on the Space Anomaly. So let's go do that real fast. Let's go talk to Helios. He is like the, uh, the, oh god, the seeker. He's, he seeks knowledge. So you can come over here and talk to him about the different things you've discovered. Hey, Helios. Ah, young one. You who still roam the boundaries of this universe. How I envy you. My time out in reality has long passed, but I miss it greatly. Perhaps you might help an old soul and share the things you've seen. I yearn for the stars and for the glory of discovery. So let's give him data on planets. He wants to know about planets. Okay. Thank you, little one. You have no idea what this means to me. Please take these nanites. They're no, they are nothing, but they are all I have now. So he gave me nanites for investigating planets. Okay. Learn a new technology blueprint. Okay. So we need to go learn a technology blueprint in the back over here. So we have nanites and we can learn a, a blueprint from all these kiosks. This is like the market in the back. This will teach you all kinds of stuff back here. So, hey, Celine, this is for your exosuit. We can learn some upgrades for our exosuit. Let's do it. Research your exosuit upgrades. So these are all the upgrades you can learn, but they cost nanites. We have 340 nanites right here. So let's learn our hazmat gauntlets. That costed 80. And then, oh no, we need 360 for our personal refiner. Basically, that's a refiner that goes in your backpack. That's really useful, but we don't have enough. So we're good. We learned that. We're good. Now, let's actually go to our exosuit upgrade, because there's a kiosk right next to the uh, exosuit person that lets us increase our inventory in our exosuit. So we could totally do that. Let's do our uh, regular general inventory. Let's do that. Boom! So now we have more space in our inventory. And now we need to br browse the huge array of base parts. So let's go to our construction station. Look at this. Look at all these base parts. Now we need salvage data just like the construction module earlier. We don't have any right now because I sold it all. But if we did, we can unlock all this stuff. And there's tons and tons of different pages of upgrades you can get. But we can't afford anything now, so we need to, you know, just move along. Now we can go back and speak to Nada about Artemis. Let's go do that. And we're just doing this. That way we can call in the Space Anomaly whenever we want to. Nada and Polo drift between worlds and worlds. They are many. Have you seen them, Traveler friend? Nada wishes they could. Nada regrets much. Traveler Entity is free to make their own path. Find Artemis Entity, explore with others, travel to great sites. Proceed as you will, Traveler Entity. We will aid you. Others will aid you also, even if you seek the Crimson Lair. Well, let me uh, ask for help with Artemis. I want to find Artemis. Let me do that. Of course, Nada has a small gift for you. Perhaps it will help. Perhaps it will not. Nada and Polo Friend will continue to search. Speak to us whenever you desire. So I got some nanites from Nada. So I got a whole bunch of nanites. But now we, are, we completed all of our... Uh, all of our missions on the Space Anomaly. So now we can call in the Space Anomaly whenever we want to. Let's head back to our spaceship and we can actually go and talk to uh, or find Artemis after we go to the space station. Because I want to show you how to scrap some ships on the space station. Let's get over here. Man, it's a big walk. Holy cow. And this will, if you're playing in multiplayer, this will be full of people. I'm playing solo right now. That's why there's not that many people here. There's not anybody, just me. But other people will be here if you're playing a multiplayer. Let's go. Yep, my shield is broken, so you got to be careful of that. My shield's broken. My whole ship is broken. That's why we're going to the space station to get rid of this thing. So let's go to the space station. It's over here. Oh, come on. Oh, wait, wait. We have a contact. Artemis! Buzz, where? Is there anyone out there? It's outside. Something's wrong with it. Identify myself. Yes. What's going on? I tell the stranger that I can hear them. There's a moment's pause. The only sound I hear is the background hiss of a cosmetic cosmic radiation. You found me. There's so little light. I thought I'd never hear another soul again. I really did. How did you find my voice? 
I found his ship. I'm literally flying with it. I tell the stranger about the abandoned starship wreck and how I found their communicator ID in the distress beacon. I begin to mention the anomalous space station, but they cut me off. It's outside, but I think I'm safe. There are 16 of them. They look just like... Oh no, where are you? Fear and confusion dance in the eyes of the stranger. After a few moments of silence, they turn to me, imploring. You don't know who you are, do you? It lied to me. It lied to all of us. The sound cuts out, but their face lingers on, silent, before it too fades into nothingness. What is going on? This must be Artemis, and they are clearly in need of help. I need to find a way to boost their signal. So I need to find a signal booster. That way I can figure out where they're at. Let's go to the space station first. Let's get over here. Quick, 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 before we get attacked by pirates. Yeah, we made it to the space station with no troubles. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to scrap this ship because it's broken and it's not worth fixing. But we can scrap it and get the parts from it and make some money. So, of course, you want to do that. Now, if it's a really good ship, you don't want to scrap it. But again, this thing is broken. So why would you want to keep a broken ship? So, especially early on, we don't have a lot of materials to fix it anyway, so it would cost more to fix it than just to scrap it. So, let's do it. We're gonna go over here to the ship kiosk right here. The starship outfitting machine. Now, let's go to claim scrap. We're about to make a million units! One million five hundred thousand. Let's do it. Warning. You will about, you're about to scrap it. Let's claim it. Oh, no! We don't have enough room for all the parts we're gonna get, so we have to leave. We need to make room for the parts we're about to get. So let's go do that right now. So if we go over here to this kiosk over here, we can sell some stuff and make some room in our inventory. So let's do that real fast. And we're going to sell. We can sell our larval core for 70,000 units. Let's do it. We can sell our ammo because we don't need any ammo. We're just trying to make room. We can sell silicate powder. We can sell our storm crystal for 128,000. Yeah. We sell the mordite. We can sell- we have an extra microprocessor. We don't need any for now, so we can sell that. We're just trying to make room in our inventory. Oh, full sack, because I- I killed an animal because it was attacking me. I can sell that. So we should have a pretty good amount of room. Let's look in our inventory. Oh yeah, look at all that room we have now. Okay, so... Let's bring all this stuff down. That way we know all of our ship stuff is gonna be up here. So we're good to go on that. So let's go back and try to scrap our ship now. Now that we have room in our inventory, we can totally scrap it and get a ton of money. One million, one and a half million. So let's scrap it. Come on, I know, I know. Let's claim the scrap. Yep, I know. Let's do it anyway. There we go. Now they're gonna go break apart that ship and give us all the parts that it got from it. And because we scrapped that ship, now our original ship comes in to replace it. So this is our original one that we got. So yes, we got it. So now we can look at all of the stuff we got. We have a storage augmentation, which means we can increase the storage in our, our ship. We have some upgrades here, so let's do that. Ship shield up module, let's do that. If you hold down X if you're on Xbox or square if you're on PlayStation, you can install this in your ship now. Let's actually install it on our technology. There we go. And we actually pick up our regular shield right here. If you press X, you pick it up. Put it in our technology. And there you go. That is why you want to put it next to each other. You see how there's a yellow outline? That means that we have an upgrade or our bonus to our upgrade. So what I mean by that is, let me look over here. You see shield strength that says 194.5. If I take this and move it, now that they don't have a yellow highlight around them, the shield strength is 193.3. We just lost one point of shield strength only because we moved it. So that is why you want to put them together. They will give you a little bit of a bonus because you're doing that. So let's install everything else too. There we go. Pulse engine upgrade right next to our pulse engine. We have a hyperdrive module. Let's put that next to our hyperdrive. Boom. So now we have an upgraded starship. Heck yes. And we can sell all these materials for money. That way we can make a ton of money. So let's talk to this pilot right here. Hey, pilot. I want to sell you some stuff, man. Let's sell items right here. And we can go to sell. And we can find those items. You do not want to sell the storage augmentation. Do not sell that. That is worth a lot. 
And I'll show you that in a minute. But we can sell the subatomic regulator. That's just a part that we don't need to keep. A spool of nano cables. We don't need to keep that. And a handful of cogs. We don't need to keep that either. We can sell the activated Indi emerald as well. So we just made a ton of money. We're almost at 2 million bucks. I love it. And so let's see what he's selling. What are you selling, sir? Anything really important? Nothing really. Oh, we have our wiring loom. We need two of those. We need that for our uh, for our upgrade for our, our uh, multi-tool. So let's buy that. And we're good. All right, so we're good on that. So if you ever want to upgrade your ship as well, come, on, come back over to the ship kiosk right over here. The one that we used to scrap the old one. And now that we have our old, our original ship, we can actually upgrade it. So let's go to upgrade starship. Now, this is why I think I'm telling you it's way more effective. You see, we can purchase storage for one million bucks, or we can apply an augmentation. And remember, we got one augmentation from the ship we just scrapped. So let's do that. We have one free upgrade. So this is basically worth one million bucks right now. Boom. So we increased our starship size. Yes. Beautiful. And then while we're here at the space station, let me show you the kiosks as well. So we have a, a exosuit upgrade so we can get more room in our exosuit. And it's going to cost you money. So right now it's going to cost me $10,000 in order to get one extra upgrade. So let's do that. And you can just keep doing that over and over. You need to go to a different star, uh, a, a different uh, space station. Man, my brain just broke there for a second. You need to go to a different space station because we bought it here. This one's already done. It's already used up. You can't use it again. So we can't use that. But we can go and get some upgrades for our star or our exosuit here. This uh, this uh, alien will sell you upgrades for it. So let's do that. Let's purchase upgrades. Now remember, upgrades are actually bought with nanites. We only have 384 nanites. And there are all kinds of upgrades here. So we can get a shield upgrade, a movement upgrade. Dang! I wish we can get some of these. But what you can do is, what I would highly recommend, especially early on, is come over to the multi-tool kiosk. So we have a multi-tool kiosk right here. Number one, you can see if you want to buy a different multi-tool. Like if you want to, if you want to go buy a different multi-tool, this one's an A-class, so it's an upgrade from our multi-tool. So it costs 775000 Ours is only worth 56000 because it's a lower grade. But... If you don't want to do that, like if you like the multi-tool you have, you can also upgrade it here on the multi-tool -tool upgrade station right here. So let's do that. We can install, we can purchase a new slot right here for 110,000 units. So we can purchase more room in our multi-tool right here, 120,000. So it increases in price the more you buy. So keep that in mind, it increases in price. 130, boom. There you go. So we've upgraded our multi-tool. But we could also buy upgrades for it that we can insert inside of it. So all these are C level, they're really low level. Then you have a B level and an A level and an S level. You want the S level upgrade, so we want to get that one. We don't have enough nanites though. We only have 384 and it costs us 500 to get it. So we won't be able to get an S class. We can get an A class if you want, but it's for a blaze javelin, which we do not have installed. All these are for a specific uh, upgrade for a specific technology on your uh, mining beam or your uh, multi-tool. So we can get a mining beam upgrade right here or a scanner upgrade. A bolt caster is for the bolt caster uh, weapon. Plasma launcher, that is for a specific upgrade for the plasma launcher and so on and so forth. So we could do all of that while we're here. And so holy cow, we are kicking so much butt. Now... The other thing we should do is we have our advanced mining laser. We need to actually install that. So let's go over to our multi-tool. We have our wiring loom. Let's do that real fast. Boom. We have a hermetic seal. We have already installed that, so we're good. We just need to make a carbon nanotube. We need one. And so that's what we need to do. We Do we have any carbon? We do not. We just have condensed carbon. So we need to find some carbon. Do you have any carbon for me? And we might not be able to get any carbon from here. Let's buy. I think they're only going to sell you oxygen, which you can turn into carbon. But nothing really. Okay, so we don't, we can't buy any carbon here. We're going to have to go get some carbon. But we got the more important things, so we're good to go on that. And we have some good room. Let's go. Let's keep going.
Now this is where you can find different things to do. So if you go, if you press your pause button, you can go into your log, and now look at all the information we have here. We have different uh, missions. So we have your primary missions. You can go, you know, alone amidst the stars, the space anomaly, the Atlas path, or you can do your secondary missions, which is exploring different planets. You could do your community research from the space anomaly, or you could do your base computer archives. All this stuff is all open to you. You can do whatever you want. The last thing I want to show you guys is you can call in the space anomaly whenever you want to. So press down on your D-pad, go over to this circle right here, the circle with a star in it, and you can call in the space anomaly. There you go. Boom. Now you can call in the space anomaly wherever you are. You have to be in space. You can't be on the planet. But if you go to a different system, you can just call it in and you can do that. You can land on the space anomaly and you can just go get missions from the Nexus or anything like that. So definitely, I hope you guys like this guide. This is a, the beginning of the game, the first couple of hours. It got you through it. Hopefully it helped you a lot. If it did, hit that like button for me. And if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel. Of course, subscribe to the channel. I love all of the everything about No Man's Sky. And I'll see you guys in the next video.